I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and thank you for joining me today. Now today's card is going to feature one of our newer stamps, Shadow, a lovely silhouette cat. And we're going to put him into a nice sunset scene. Now I'll show you the stamps and things and then explain a little bit about what the process is going to be. So our stamps for today are Shadow, Hilly Horizon, uh, we use the birds out of the farm life set, uh, flower border and wattle. We're also going to be using the Eclectic Images Circle Stencil. Our inks today will be Versamark for embossing, uh, Versafine Claire Nocturne for some silhouette stamping, and our colouring will be done with the Catherine Pooler Lemoncello, Samba, Pucker Up, Cove Blue, Fiesta Blue and all that jazz. And I'll also be using the magnetic workstation just to hold everything in place while I'm using the stencils. Okay, now normally I would do my embossing last, but today I'm going to do it first. And the reason for this is that the Versafine Clear Nocturne, when we start doing our silhouette stamping with that, it is touch dry in a few minutes, but it's actually embossable for quite a long time. And I've got caught out before where I thought I've given it enough time to dry and I've heat set it and I've still, in the course of doing a demonstration or making a video, still got caught out that the embossing powder sticks to that as well as where I want it to stick. So you do need to make sure with Versafine Clear, if you don't want to emboss it, that you give it plenty of time to dry. So we're going to reverse things a little bit and do our embossing first, just so that we don't get caught out with that problem. The difficulty that that's going to create for me is it's hard to stamp over where you've already embossed an area. So we'll have to work out how we get around that. Okay, so let's stamp our flower border quite low on the card. And I'm using the Beati Mixed Media card here. Put our catching sheet in and pop some black embossing powder on. Tap that down. Flip it over, tap on the back, have a look, and we haven't got much extra grains, which is good. Now I'm not going to stop and heat use the heat gun at the moment. I'll do the wattle around the top edge of the card as well, just so we're only using the heat gun and making loads of noise with it once. So I've got the wattle stamp, again I've got the Versamark ink pad, and we're going to stamp around the top part of the card. And I'm picking out the pits of the design that have got a bit more fronds and a bit less of the fluffy wattle pattern. So you just got to be careful because I haven't heated that, that I don't accidentally brush against it and brush some of that embossing powder off. Okay, let's put our powder on there. So hanging on to it carefully in between. Again, just have a bit of a look and a bit of a brush if we have got any extra bits because Naughty Me didn't use her anti-static pad first so therefore I've got to deal with the fallout. Of course none of you would make that mistake. I say that in jest because I know so many of us forget to use our anti-static pad until it's too late. But anyway, that's got rid of most of it. Okay, I can pop that back in the jar later. Just get that out of the way, get our heat gun happening.
have just a little bit of a look, make sure I've got it all, and that looks great. Okay, cool it slightly. So our first stamp to put in is going to be the Hilly Horizon, and this I'll do with the Versafine Claire Nocturne. So this will give me a base layer for the card to know where to work my colours from. Put that one down nice and low, and I've got to really push because I need to try and get past that embossing powder. There we go, quite nice. Okay. And I might do it again because Nocturne takes a little while to dry, I might save putting the shadow in until after we've created our background colour. So I'll need to get the stencil out. So we're going to use both one of the circles, the medium one, and I'm going to use the mask of that. So when you get this set of stencils, it comes with the masks as well. So let's pop our magnetic mat, and I'm going to put it in underneath my worksheet. Because I'm going to be going over the edges of the card, I still want to have my paper there. So pop that magnetic sheet in, pop my card over the top of it, Put our mask on, so that's where the sun's going to be coming up. I might make it that side and put shadow here. And then I can put a magnet on that. I'm going to put another couple just to hold the card down as well. And then we can start with our shading. Actually, I lie. I'm going to do this one first <laughs> and put in the actual yellow part of the, of the sun. And then we'll start adding all the colour around. Okay, so let's pop the other magnet on here. Get our lemon cello and our yellow brush. And start brushing some colour in there. Now I'm not bothering to mask the horizon because we're going to be colouring that all in black. So if I get a bit of these colours onto it, it's not going to matter. Now I'm going over to a reasonable matte because I want that yellow to be nice and vivid. Okay. Now then we can just give a lighter glow around it. And as I usually like to take my colour a little bit into the zone of where the next colour is going to be, I'm just taking it up further than where I want to have yellow because that's where we'll bring our pucker up, our pink. So grab the pucker up and our pink brush. So working from the edge of the card in and then bring it down into that yellow Work from this side as well. So put the colour where you want it and then work it down into the previous colour. If you need to do it in the middle of the card, just go lightly first and then build up your pressure as your brush is moving and that way you won't get too many lines. Now let's take that pink up a lot higher than where we want it. I do want these colours nice and bright, so I'm just going over it a little bit just to make sure I get enough colour on. Okay, waft that pink up a little bit higher. Now I'm going to need to move a couple of my magnets so I can come in with the Fiesta Blue. where I want it and then bring it down into that pink. Now I use this Fiesta Blue a lot when I'm doing sunrises and sunsets because I find it just a really good blue. Um, so I have just re just re the pad because I do find 
that it keeps the vibrant. If I do, if I start to lose the vibrancy of colour, that's the indication it's going to need a re-ink. So bringing in that blue, blending it down into the pink, which is giving us a lovely mauve shade there. If I'm not happy with the pink, with the with the, where the, the blend line is, I'll just take the pink up into the blue a bit more. Bring the blue down again until we get that nice transition there. And I think I will. I'm going to do some stamping in the all that jazz. Let's just add a little bit of that just around the top edge too. I think it's going to look quite nice just to get a little bit of that aqua tone in there as well. Now the last colour I want to add in is a bit of Samba because I want some real red along that horizon. So let's switch again to our top magnets and this is where we're going to mask the sun so that I'm getting the Samba in around the edges there. So grab a red brush and again I'm not going to worry about it being onto our hillside at all because that's going to be done in black. ambidextrous with shading. Ho oh, oh. ho! That's not too bad. It's mainly because I don't want to be turning things around and having you lose the vision of it. But yep, left hand's not doing too bad. Okay, so that's going to create a really good glow. Let's take some bits off. And move those to one side and take our mask off and you start to see what is formulating. Now I can slip out the magnetic plate now and we're going to start adding in some extra stamping. So let's put shadow in at this stage and I'm going to do that in my stamp press because sometimes when you're doing a silhouette stamp you do need to go over it several times to make sure that you get the black really intense. And I'm going to put up a bit higher in my platform. Now, where did we decide we want him? He's going to be sitting right on that hillside, which means his tail is actually going to go off the page a little bit. Just got to make sure his bottom is nestling nicely into the hillside. Whereas it looks a bit odd if he's sitting a little bit above it. If that happens though, I'll just raise the hillside up to meet him. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not a, um, a not get outable situation. Okay, let's ink him up. So this is the Versifying Claire Nocturne. So I don't need to ink all the way to the end of his tail. We're really only just getting him and his bottom, uh, down to the bottom. And I will use my stamp baron here just to give a little bit extra push. And because you're using Versifying Claire, just give it a few minutes for that ink to absorb into the page. So see where I said we've got to be careful around the embossing, where it doesn't always, because you've got the embossing there, it doesn't always meet. So I'm going to need to ink that up really thoroughly. And give it an extra special push. In fact, I'm even going to stand up and give that a really hard push over that area to get past that raisedness of the um, embossing powder. Let's see how we did. Much better. See how we've got that nice and even? And I don't have to worry about that because we're gonna color that in the black later. Okay, so that I'm really happy with. Let's move that to one side and we'll add the rest of our stamping in. So we'll go back to the flower border and bring in the all that jazz We're going to ink it up and we're going to stamp first and second generation. So we'll stamp first generation a little bit higher than what we did our basic one that we embossed. And then I'll move it over a bit so we get some different patterns of flowers and take it up a little bit higher. 
and we'll get that lovely second generation coming through. We'll do the same with the wattle, but I might just do second generation there. Let's have, we'll do a second generation, see how it looks. We can always add some first in if we want it. I think that's enough up the top there. Yep. And we're going to put some tr gum trees in down. I was going to put the wattle down the sides, but that's okay. We're going to put some gum trees in there. Now, I'm just going to switch to the Cove Blue. So these are all in the party collection, these ink colours. So that's the more saturated colour. But I want to do some little bit softer stamping, so I'm going to pick Cove Blue, which is in the Spa collection. A little bit odd to be combining the collections, but it can really work. Now, we can just put an extra bit of hillside. I don't want to put a hill across where we've got that lovely sun, because that would look really odd but we can put an extra bit of hillside just in here. Let's do it second generation. And we'll need to color that in a little bit of blue. But it can have, it can have red near the top of it because that's where the red light from the sun is hitting the top of that hillside. Now let's bring in the gum trees. So because it's just on sunrise and the trees are in the distance, they can have that blue tone to them. So we'll do one here and then another one higher with the second generation so again you get lovely transition and then we might just do one on the other side excellent okay Now we need to colour in the rest of this hillside. So that's going to involve the Versify and Clear Nocturne, but used with a brush, but also used with a mask. So I've got the Versify and Clear Nocturne, I've got my little black brush, and I've got my mask. So I'm going to mask all where we've done all that beautiful colouring. and colour black from there down. So this doesn't matter how rough you are, you just want to get lots of colour on. But our black embossing will still, because it's got that raised quality and because it's shiny, it will still stand out from this background black. Let's have a look, see how dark, oh, that's good. Yep, that's dark enough. So now Shadow, he needs, he needs that to be grounded, to be part of his scenery. And I think the only other thing I'm going to add to that, oh, we need the little birds in the sky. We'll do that with Nocturne as well. So the birds are from this farm set. Now, the trick with the birds is they're very, very small. So if you press too hard, they will blur really easily. So you really have got to just ink them up and just touch them to the card and you get a much better image. So let's ink those up and just touch to the card. Just wondering if I need this a little bit deeper around the edge or am I happy? I think I'm happy actually. Maybe I need a little bit more of the all that jazz, the aqua. Let's bring in just a touch more. 
bring it down a little bit further. It is quite a glorious colour. Although, as you can tell from mostly what I wear and my logo and everything, I'm a bit of a sucker for aqua. Do like that. Okay, let's just grab a little bit of stickles. Um, I've got here just to add some extra highlights just to some of our embossed bits. So I'll just give it a bit of a squeeze, make sure it's running, and then we're just going to touch it to some of these embossed bits, which would just look a little bit like they're being touched by the morning light. just gives that little bit of pizzazz to the card. So you don't have to cover the whole flowers, that would be too much. It's just adding that little bit of drama. Do you think some up in the wattle as well? I think so. Maybe it's a little bit of Christmas still carrying over. I want to glitter everything. happy with that there we go I'm gonna bring it forward onto the black so that you can get a good look at it so I'm very happy with that one I love those intensity of colors just to me just looks like a beautiful sunrise I actually think now looking at it that I didn't need to add the extra little bit of hillside in there it would have probably looked better just to have kept the samba all the way across but you know I'll do that on the next card <laughs> so thank you for being with me and watching this one. I hope you'll have a go. I hope you like our new shadow stamp. I think he's going to have lots of applications. See you again next time.